And it was a wonderful school. It had been created as one of the first schools, public schools, and you know public school in England means private school, to admit Jews, which in the 19th century was fairly radical. And it had maintained that, um, that tradition of being very open uh, to all who came. And um, so it was, and the headmaster uh, was a rather eccentric but lovable man. Every morning we would start out with hymns, Christian hymns, even though it was a multi-denominational group of students who had to sit in assembly and log in that we were there and also sing hymns and the, the headmaster said a few prayers and then we went off to class. So every morning we would have, we would be told there would be, a, they'd put up a sign which would say which hymns from the hymn book were going to be sung, the numbers. So I had this idea of um, uh, starting a gambling uh, pool on, the, on which hymns were going to be sung. And I went to the headmaster to ask him if he would approve. And he thought it was a great idea because he thought it would um, in, make the kids more interested in, in the hymns that were being sung. He, being a rather radical and eccentric gentleman. And he said, fine. And I, by this time, had become an avid printer, having a printing press, having moved from the Jingo comic to a more money-making operation. So I had a, a letterpress, a printing press with quite a lot of typefaces and stuff. So I created and printed the forms for the hymn pools and the rules, which were very strict and detailed, and started hawking them around the school with great success, including the entire kitchen staff of the cafeteria, who all bought in. And everything was going fine, and people were winning money and getting interested in the hymns. And then somebody uh, tipped off the, one of the more conservative newspapers, I think it was the Daily Telegraph, and this story came out, the headmaster creating gambling around the hymns, blah, 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 and it was all hell broke loose. And the headmaster was actually uh, threatened with possibly having to resign because the scandal just grew. And some, there are small mercies, fortunately for all of us, including him. The king died, conveniently. No newspapers were published, I think, for a week to recognize the death of the king. And so the story died and it never reappeared. So the headmaster's career was saved by the king dying. <laughs>